Good morning, everybody. Uh, my little chickadees. I don't know why I called you chickadees, but um, just just bear with me, chickadees. All right, it's a great morning to be here in Missoula, except if it's if you don't like the cold, then, you know, too bad for you. I got a lot to talk about today. Uh, I don't have pre-critic today. Sorry, I know some of you look forward to it. Uh, I do have a Flagship Friday video of the week. It's pretty long. It's about 10 minutes long, and it's uh, inspired by the game Mafia, not uh, the actual... Uh, uh, Rockstar game mafia, but there's a little game you can play uh, in a circle with a bunch of kids, and um, I'll, I'll stop talking. Anyways, so we got some um, news of what's happening. I got some city council where they're talking about an encroachment to Greeno Park. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, history tidbit about Greeno Park in that regard, and I'll get to all that and more a little bit later. So let's kick things off with some weather. It is currently 21 degrees outside. It's going to be mostly sunny today, so you might actually see some temperatures going into the 30s. Um, according to this, the high is going to be 29, the low is going to be 16, and it's pretty much be, be that way, but be aware that this weekend there's going be freezing patchy fog so just if you plan on going out and about this weekend as well so just be aware that with freezing fog comes freezing roads and all sorts of other wonderfully freezing things that are in the area so if you're traveling this weekend you may want to um, rethink that or um, take the risk you know it's Montana if you're from Montana then you're perfectly fine with taking a risk on the icy roads so let's move on to uh, some news items that are happening um, f so basically um, last uh, episode I was talking about monthly rate fees that Helena tried to push for uh, health care so people would pay like oh like a it's like a gym membership imagine gym membership fee but it's in terms of health care that's basically what they're doing. And um, now here in Missoula, they're offering that at cost care. So for a monthly fee of $70 for adults and $25 for children under 18, patients will have access to routine medical care and access to personal physician with no charge for office visits and minimum, minimal to no charge for lab work and routine procedure. As Helena Lawmaker Bill was shot down by Governor Steve Volk because people already have to pay for medical costs through insurance, um, why make them pay even more? Cost care will be utilizing the medical gym members membership form for their uh, off Mullen Road clinic out of the Great Northern Loop. It's near the county jail in Missoula. While patients who become members of Costco will still need to have a high deductible low monthly cost insurance plan for catastrophic medical emergencies, they may be able to save money by not having high monthly premium low deductible uh, plan with this new model. So basically it's good for people who have to go to the clinic regularly because we all need to see the doctor once a month according to nobody. Of course I'm being biased. Let's move on to the next thing. In the Missoulian as well, uh, faculty at the University of Montana have uh, kind of gathered to uh, uh, to write a letter in opposition to Bobby Houck's hire to uh, UM Grizz coach. Uh, he was Grizz coach from 2003 to 2009, in which he had a, a very, a really good uh, football record. So uh, basically, uh, University of Montana took, um, so he went over, to, he went down to uh, Las Vegas and he basically uh, um, uh, worked as a co head coach down in Las Vegas for a while, bo bopped around a little bit. Now he's back here in uh, Grizz country doing that kind of thing. So anyways, let's talk, talk about, about the uh, faculty. Faculty member Elizabeth Hubble drafted a letter requesting UM reconsider the hire, and she shared the concerns with the signers Thursday at a faculty senate meeting. She said that the number of signers continued to grow, and the individuals named in the Missoulian story posted online Thursday morning received threatening emails later from a staff member at the athletic athletics department at the university. She said the email didn't make any physical threat, but it reads pretty threatening. She said that the email told the signers they should be more focused on their jobs than on HALC, especially given the um, tenuous status of the lectures at UM. Lectures do not have tenure, and the administration has plans to cut some lectures to shore up its budget. But of course, Bobby HALC has yet to make any statements about anything since his hire and his consideration as well. Moving on, let's talk about some state news. While Montana's homelessness population, yeah, it's a whole bunch of good news happening all over the state of Montana. While Montana's homeless population has increased about 8% in 2017 over the previous year. So it's 8% increase over the last just a year, and it's still 5% less um, than the homeless count from 2010. A national uh, re report released Wednesday by U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development with the billings seeing the biggest increase in the state. Of the total, 
193,000 people had no access to nightly shelter and instead were staying in vehicles, tents, and streets and other places considered uninhabitable. The unsheltered figure is up by more than 9% compared to two years ago. According to statistics provided by the Montana Continuum of Care Coalition, billions recorded a 28.8% increase in the number of homeless. The largest in the state, followed by Kalispell at 16.2 and Bozeman at 7.5, um, and these are the largest um, growths in, in, in the amount of uh, people. So th that transients, uh, that translates to there's uh, 431 people in Billings that are homeless, 248 in Kalispell, and 115 people in Bozeman. Homelessness went down in Missoula from the years before, from 395 to 344, but of course it remains the second highest homeless population in the state of Montana per capita. Um, driven by a fierce Santa Ana winds, and let's move on to some more national news, four intense fires near Los Angeles glued to engulf more than 115,000 acres Thursday. Officials say residents should continue to expect dangerous fire conditions uh, as both strong winds and very dry conditions persist. 2,500 firefighters, uh, firefighters uh, battling the large blaze. The Thomas Fire containment is now at 5% of that 115,000 acre blaze. Another 3,000 firefighters have been working on controlling other fires in Los Angeles, Riverside, and San Diego counties. There are um, um, there's a lot of efforts to evacuate not just people, but also horses, livestock, according to the San Diego Urban Tribune. The San Diego County fire has destroyed 20 structures and threatens 2,000 more. Uh, the Grant Creek, uh, the Creek Fire, sorry, not Grant Creek, the Creek Fire in San Fernando Valley has burned more than 15,000 acres and is, the, is at 20% containment. The smaller Rye Fire in the north is scorched 7,000 acres and is 25% contained. Uh, forecasters had predicted whisk wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour per hour saying that the this week would bring the worst of the seasonal Santa Ana winds. So uh, thousands of people have been placed under evacuation orders making the situation more dangerous for anyone trying to flee afflicted areas. The fires have forced closures on uh, many roads in addition to the uh, brief shutdown of the stretch of the 101 on Thursday. A portion of the 4 or 5 freeway was closed in both directions for a time on Wednesday. Um, so yeah, air conditions are hazardous, and anyone should avoid any outdoor exposure in the in these um, San Diego, San Fernando Valley type stuff. So just be aware that a lot of stuff is um, happening in California, and they don't have the leisure of winter to snuff out the fires as we do here in Montana. So there's billions of dollars uh, worth of damage already taking place, and it's expected to get even worse because of these winds. So um, and also th be aware that um, any small fires can have the potential to become even bigger fires because of these winds as well. But I have a guest on today, um, um, and he's going to be talking about his uh, concerts coming up. It's John Floridus, and he will be talking more about this after a brief art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts. And this is the last time I'm going to play um, this art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts because this weekend is when they're going to take down all the art pieces. So you have until the end of today to go to the Social Science Building to check this art out. <laughs>
guys, welcome back. We're here with John Floridus, and um, I'm sorry, I'm just, I just, like, if you just speed through, it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Floridus. Floridus. Yep. Or that. <laughs> yep. And uh, he's here to talk about a, a, a couple of his concerts that are coming up here in the, the city of Missoula. He's going to be playing at Imagination Brewing Company uh, tonight. He's going to be playing at E3 Convergence Gallery on the 14th, which is next Wednesday. Uh, public House on a Sunday. That Oh, actually, wait, no. Um, the 17th, yeah, he's also playing Public House, but yeah. um, I'm trying to go in order. So um, tonight, the 14th and the 17th at St. Paul Lutheran Church, and then again, and then once again at Public House on the 20th. Correct. You yeah. got them all. So uh, what can people expect? Uh, you obviously are a guitar musician um, as well. So you will sing, you'll play uh -huh. music as well. Yes. And I've seen you uh, uh, perform as well. You have a bunch of foot pedals uh -huh. that allows you to loop <laughs> certain uh, true. music true. as well. So Fully confess. You know, yeah. Which is good. You're like, yeah. I mean, like the, a lot of people do that nowadays, and it's, well, it's, it gives you a lot more control, and you know what you sound like, and it yeah. also help, helps you back yourself up mm -hmm. in your own music um, avenue. But I'm going to let you talk. Okay, sure. And so uh, this is also to benefit a lot of organizations. It is, yeah. Well, and, and the just the looping thing is just, and then all the pedals, it's to kind of diversify the sound a little bit, so it's not just um, listening to some guy play guitar all night. So you have a lot of different textures and, and sounds, and that's kind of, uh, that's a big reason why I like to do that kind of that kind of a performance. So it'll be a little more on the acoustic -y side, but there will definitely be um, you know, a little more energy than, than uh, your typical guy in his guitar concerts, I guess. And yes, you're right, all these, all these concerts will be benefiting different organizations that work with people in need in the community. As you mentioned, the one tonight at, tonight being Friday the 8th, at uh, Imagination Brewing, and that is to benefit Missoula Youth Homes. And uh, then the ones uh, coming up here uh, next Thursday at E3 will benefit the Missoula Food Bank. And then at St. Paul Lutheran, Lutheran Church will be Family Promise. And at the Public House will be to benefit the Paparello Center. So cool. Yeah. And uh, you've done many concerts throughout Missoula for mm -hmm. many, many years now. <laughs> um, you were voted uh, Best Musician in the Independent a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, reading about that as well. Um, I usually finish second to Tom Catmull, though. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I've won it a couple times, but uh, but Tom, 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 yeah, yeah, Tom, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's well, a running it, it's a running it, joke with me. Yeah, us good friends. His uh, his kids go to our summer camps all the time. Oh, okay. He has some great kids, cool. and yeah. it's it, it has a nice little family band going on there. Nice. Oh yeah. Dynamic. Oh yeah. And you, um, I I remember because you usually play first night in Missoula. Yeah, correct. So you're playing it again tonight as well. I am. I am this year. It's that's going to be a trio that'll be very different than no. this stuff. It'll, it'll definitely be more plugged in and uh, a little more electrified. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be at the Music Recital Hall that night. And you usually uh, call your mom. I do, yeah. And that'll <laughs> happen again this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because she lives in Indiana. And sometimes she'll be here oh. during the during the uh, New Year holiday. It's her, obviously it's her birthday on New Year's, New Year's Day. Uh, but this year she'll be back in Indiana. So I'll be, yeah, I'll be doing the, the uh, calling Dorothy from the, from the stage. <laughs> So uh, what uh, what kind of music can people I mean, like like some of your popular songs? What are some of your popular songs? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, for these concerts that are coming up, you know, what I do is I do a kind of a combination of my own arrangements of more traditional Christmas music and just kind of put my own spin on yeah. it, so to speak. And then I also do other songs that are, they may have sort of a wintry theme to them or they sort of explore the journey of darkness into light. Right. So uh, you can take that however way you want, metaphorically, emotionally, spiritually, however you want to. And, uh, uh, but uh, the, the idea is to try to, bring some, try to bring some light to a season where it's getting dark. A lot of people are, uh, a lot of times for folks, December is kind of a rough month for them psychologically and emotionally. And it's also just a bunch of noise and clatter. Yeah around the holidays there's a lot so, of yeah there's, there's just a lot, lot of nonsense just, that's just like the perfect way to describe it yeah they're just a lot oh, there's a, a lot, lot. yeah <laughs> so this is an event to kind of let folks sort of chill a little bit kick back mm -hmm. hear some music and also benefit uh, a lot of folks in our community that are in need Cool. So let me read off the list one more time. Imagination Brewing Company tonight, starting at mm -hmm. 5? 5.30. Mm -hmm. And then again, you're going to be playing at E3 Convergence Gallery on the 14th. At what time? 7. 7? Yeah. Um, on St. Paul Lutheran Church on the 17th of this month on... 7. At 7. So And Public House at the 20th at... 7. 7. Great. So, uh... Let's give people a little taste of what they can expect. Sure, well, here's a, here's a traditional tune that uh, I put my spin on.
John. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yep. And uh, stay with me. I still got a lot more show for you guys. Uh, so uh, you've been warned. <laughs> if you talk to Russians. If that they have a kind of socialist and even democratic mentality. Most Russians actually retain these humanistic values that were propagated during the Soviet period, even though they might not call it socialist. Now, they in fact, polls show this and conversations show this, they still believe in community, they appreciate democratic rights of speech, assembly, travel and religion, they particularly like travel. They, are, they have a conviction that the government ought to provide social protections and welfare to vulnerable citizens, and they even have a deep uh, commitment to egalitarianism. So I want to end with this, that for me, the basic takeaway from 1917 and October, and the long and difficult Soviet experience, is that there's no real socialism without democracy. And the fundamental takeaway from both Russian and American politics today is there's no real democracy without what I've called socialism. The Antiquities Act of 1906 um, was passed during Teddy Roosevelt's administration. And uh, I want to tell you, when you divide presidents in the categories for conservation purposes, there are only two categories, Teddy Roosevelt and everybody else. <laughs> and so to, whoops, the, the, the Antiquities Act states that it has to be the smallest area practical. The original bill called for 640 acres. And the bill was passed to protect these villages. And, and the idea was, you know, 640 acres would be enough. But people in Congress rightly saw that, that well, that's too rigid. It's got to be a little more flexible, just a little bit more. And so what happened when Teddy Roosevelt went to the, side, the, the edge of the Grand Canyon? I hereby declare 800,000 Welcome veterans, family, friends, and special guests. I'd like to thank the mayor, the commissioners, and the senators' representatives for being here today. Today is a special day for us all. It means many things, all different to each individual. I'm going to tell you briefly what it means to me. Veterans Day to me is not about celebrating my service. It's about celebrating the service of all veterans. Celebrating the service of veterans from all eras, as well as celebrating the service of those who are no longer with us. Celebrating the service of veterans like Dan Gallagher and Daniel Krieg and many others like them. They're the ones who have paved the way for us to be here today. It was them who carried this Veterans Day in Missoula and frankly, I'm honored and humbled to be with you to all acknowledge their service to our veterans, our community, and to our nation.
kicking off the city council today is a little bit of uh, Greeno Park action going on there. So the city of Missoula uh, is talking about um, certain things that are happening um, with Greeno Park. Uh, is Missoula's oldest park. And per uh, scientific surveys, one of the most highly visited parks in the city, it was created in 19... 02 by donation by Thomas L. Greeno and Tenny Greeno to the city of Missoula and later expanded through subsequent parkland dedication, the deed in, by which the Greeno Park w land was transferred from the Greeno family to the city of Missoula restricts the use of the lands to park purposes. In 1952, the heirs of Thomas and um, Tenney filed a lawsuit against the city of Missoula for violations of the deed restrictions contained in the 1902 Greeno deed. Primarily, the heirs complained the city was not maintaining the park as parkland in its natural state. The lawsuit was eventually resolved via con con consent uh, decree and stipulation. The stipulation incorporated 13 points, previous adoption of the city of Missoula Park Board and City Commission for the future governance of Greeno Park and the parties uh, stipulated by the Greeno heirs would settle the lawsuit in exchange for the city's agreement to manage Greeno Park. Uh, the city of Missoula elected uh, to offer most of the residents w with encroachments to Greeno Park. So the whole idea is that, that that's just a little background. I mean, that's more like a lot of background. But the point is, in this meeting, um, they were talking about some of the uh, restrictions for encroachment. That means there's there's so many residents. There are 26 private residents that are encroaching into Greeno Park. And the city of Missoula is trying to figure out a way to basically honor the deed that was done back in 1902 when it was given to. So basically, Greeno Park is well over 100 years old um, here in, the, I mean, as established here in the city of Missoula. And here is Donna Glocker with Parks and Recreation. She's the Park and, Re and Recreation um, Director, and this is what she had to say. In this case, we felt it important to make an exception for the easement based on. Um, the 2012 survey and the um, 1955 decree and the 1902 deed. The cost, um, in order to do a full appraisal, which is what we require with cash and lieu on subdivision, we would generally find that we were spending more for the appraisal than we would be. Um, receiving or they would be paying for the easement. And All right, so uh, basically um, what they were talking about. All right, so what they're basically talking about is, uh, let me go back to my notes. Uh, the costs are basically $10.47 uh, $10 a square foot for the encroachment easement and uh, and and, uh, and an um, $895 flat fee for uh Re, uh, encroachment license. So the idea is that if anybody wants to do any kind of movement towards this or any kind of development, like subdividing what the city of Missoula is doing for the areas around Green Park, they have to pay this. And they, and they basically, Ms. Gockler states that she would like to have the project completed in two to three years uh, because there's just a lot of red tape around doing any kind of development around Greeno Park, um, not only just in that area as well. Um, so Mirtha uh, Bersella, uh, Bersera, she's the new board member who replaced um, um, Ruth Ann Sweeney. She asked Elizabeth Erickson about how many people in the area would pay for anything that would change or affect the boundaries of the park. If I'm a homeowner and my property is encroaching on park land, um, I would have to do a boundary line relocation to bring it into compliance at some point at my expense. Is that um, No, we're not doing any boundary line relocation. They're just going to either obtain an easement or a license to allow them to maintain their private property in that area of public park. Yeah, this is a really important part. People's encroachments, their boundary line is at the edge of the park. They're using and getting the benefit of public, public space. Okay. okay. So All right, so that was uh, Brian Von Losberg at the very end, um, giving a little note about that. Um, basically, any new fencing has to uh, go through the Parks and Rec Department along with the City of Missoula, and um, it, the whole idea is that uh, issues when it comes to people um, like maybe having a new fence or refencing the area have a tendency to be like, oh, they're not in the general line of the fencing. So a lot of this happens. Um, the whole idea is that if you try to uh, pretty much put up a new fence, um, I mean, you have to be aware that you have to 
r remain within the boundary lines because you don't want to um, because if you encroach on the property of Arena Park you're actually uh, liable for a lawsuit as well so they're trying to be very careful with this as well because there's uh, there's the squatter rule the squatter law that's in effect so basically it's like with your neighbors the whole idea of a squatter law is that if you build a fence encroaching onto your neighbor's property and basically it stands for like five years or so um, you basically inherit their property you're basically stealing their property and they can't do anything about it so this is kind of what the Green Park is doing to prevent this kind of stuff so they have so many red tape around it in general um, just in Green Park as a whole so that's uh, that being said uh, here is Elizabeth Erickson um, talking a little bit more about this encroaching as well I think, too, um, we've had that discussion about what is really the useful, you know, what, what is that land, what is it that we're permitting people to use as part of their private encroachment area? It's so public land that is owned by the city of Missoula that we are the trustees of that land, and it also provides habitat. And, I mean, that's a huge part of why Green Oak Park exists. It's a um, more of a natural park with less development so all right so uh, um, basically uh, Grand Park is one of a kind and they want to keep it one of a kind it's it's a park but it's also not really a park it's they call it a nature park because it's one of those places that are completely not developed in a way they have trails and they have bridges across the uh, the creeks and all that stuff but other than that everything is pretty much kept left alone for the most part um, but that basically uh, the funds collected go uh, the funds collected by these encroachment rules and laws per square feet for any kind of um, um, people who do this uh, all the money would go to back into Greeno Park but of course it's not limited to a long-term master plan but it's also specifically but not limited to long-term master plan um, the the will work towards protecting the park as well um, that's interesting I'm reading it from a copy and paste so uh, it's it's a kind of weird it's kind of strange wording for that part as well um, on a side note um, in the uh, um, and I think this was in the um, public works public work uh, I mean parks and conservation with Green Park sorry let me move on I'm going on to a new topic um, city fire department in the um, Public Works Department want to sell two um, Pierce Sabre fire engines as a result of some of the new engines that would make these uh, reserve engines unnecessary. The engines are being sold for $20,000 a piece. The air compressor and the cascade system goes are being sold for 5000 so the whole idea is that the uh, city fire department will be selling these packages uh, these as $45,000 total of course a new engine like this goes for approximately $450,000 uh, 10 times more than what they're selling it for and they are and there's a couple smaller communities in River Valley County that are looking into buying these fire engines uh, off of them so a lot of uh, fire engines and reserve fire engines are kind of pretty well dated especially here in Missoula from from what I've seen in the past meetings and then what they're talking about and everything um, is that uh, a lot of city fire uh, engines and all that stuff are pretty dated. Um, most of the time they try to, they, the whole idea is that according to more fire fire standards is that they have to have, uh, it seems like they have to have a new fire truck every five to 10 years and the city of Missoula tends to get um, new ones every 10 to 15 years. So let's move on to admin and finance. And what they're talking about in an admin and finance is basically doing a uh, tax increment, a senior subdivision urban renewal bond. So basically more taxes for the people in the north side for their future development of the um, Scott, I think it's Scott Street, um, um, Scott Street um, Village or North Side. Oh, it's, I think it's North Side Village, uh, or it could be Scott Street Village. Don't. Uh, I'll. I'll. I'll get to that in a bit. But here is. Um, this is Jill Dunn. She's with Missouri Development Agency. She presented agenda item information along with a PowerPoint presentation, and this is what she had to say. And here's a nice little map of the North Side as well. This is a picture of the North Reserve Scott Street Master Plan Overlay that was completed about a year ago and has kind of a, a master plan for this area that has a lot of industrial area to it. And the development of a neighborhood to the west of north side was, was um, recommended in the plan. You'll see the yellow area is the residential and you'll see the project areas outlined again on this map. All right, so if you're taking a look at this map, 
This was proposed by Chris Behan um, about a year ago, like she said. And a lot of the area, uh, let me kind of like go over this area. Um, Scott Street is, I believe it's in this general area right here. And this uh, purple area is going to be the new Scott Street Village where they're going to have houses and development, um, more commercial, residential, um, 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 business, that kind of thing. They're basically trying to revitalize uh, the north side's area, even though that most of this gray area right here that you see is uh, usually associated with industrial. Um, and it's near the, uh, um, the train station, and this is where they pretty much put, uh, the, it's like a refinery for gas, and they just put like fuel up areas, and they get gas, and they do all that kind of stuff, and natural gas depository as well. So it's a, it's a pretty uh, big industrial site on the north side, but they're trying to develop uh, more of the north side area because there's open land vacant and they've already built so many houses in that general area and um, let's see so phase one is pretty much done on the north side and this is a part for the phases as well um, so uh, Jill Dunn she talks about uh, phase one of this plan and she shows some of the pictures that Chris Behan has take from the developmental services about some of the looks of the the Scott Street Village a little bit about phase one. Phase one was 24 single family homes and four townhomes. It was a devel estimated development cost of 4.6 million. Um, tax increment financing was $518,230. And again, I, it, it was recently completed in November of 2017. Um, the price point on those homes was about 150 uh, to $200,000. And it's easy to say that most of these homes have already been sold even before a lot of them were even built in the first place. So Northside is getting a uh, quite a population boom pretty soon as soon as these houses are built and uh, formed as well. Um, I do, uh, Courtney Ellis, uh, of course, she uh, kind of clarifies um, these bonds a little bit more. Um, some of the issues that um, John Debari had with this bond is that um, it's an interesting, um, it's, it's, it's for him, He's just not really convinced about this bond, and um, he's not really happy about it, but he, this is Courtney Ellis explaining it. Um, the, the outstanding bonds in this district were also what we call senior subordinate. Um, it means that they are, so th these bonds will be on a parity with the outstanding bonds. Um, in theory, um, the city could issue bonds that are senior to these bonds and have a basically the first priority lien on the tax increment funds in the district. Uh, but that's, and that comes at a particular coverage um, amount, which I believe here is 1.4. Um, these bonds and the existing, this uh, series 2015 bonds are both at a 1.1 coverage test requirement. So, um, it's basically just for a little bit of additional flexibility here. Um, so basically, um, from that comment, John Debari from the city council wasn't quite convinced. I had a uh, comment from him as well. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the audio from the uh, Sire website is kind of... Uh, is pretty bad, honestly. Um, and those are some of the better uh, quotes I was able to get that I can actually... Uh, subject you guys to uh, at home. Um, of course, they voted to put this on the committee reports with John Debari, Debari voting against it because it was uncertain of what kind of flexibility this bond would actually allow. Uh, but of course, this concludes your city council reports. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, actually getting a house on the uh, north side, here is a kind of a nice little website that was provided um, by them as well. Um, here, just kind of give you a base rate of all the houses. Uh, it looks like unit A which is a two-bedroom, 1.5 bath, is starting at $224,500. And these houses, and they're, they're just talking about how many people, how many of them are available. Unit C is completely unavailable, so you can't pay $184,500 for a two-bedroom, one bath, um, 880 square feet um, um, home. So you kind of have the idea of like you kind of have different styles, different designs, and stuff like that. And it it shows that. Uh, um, the lots that are available for this stuff. Um, you can kind of check it out on, and stuff like that. Of course, this one's sold out. Just, you know, it's, it, it is just kind of gives you a representation of some of the houses, what some of the houses are going to look like on the north side when they start developing the north side a little bit more. Uh, this is mostly in compliance with phase two, but of course, phase one is pretty much done. Um, if you want more information about the city of Missoula webpage, you can go to CI 
www.missoula.mt.us. Um, it's a great website where you can find out what's going on with the city, upcoming agenda items, and more information about what's happening in the city government beat. Um, so that's kind of what's happening with the city council. Um, if you are interested, uh, you, once again, that website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Well, um, I promised you guys it's time for some Flagship Friday video of the week, and this is uh, a nice movie. Uh, I want to say it's more like a featurette because it's about 10 minutes long. So this is Mafia. What's he look like? Hmm. I don't know. Nobody has seen him. Good Anywhere. for you. Good luck with that. Hey, we're, we are looking for a mafia. Can you see him there? What's that? <laughs> What you got, phone? Hello. We're looking for a mafia. Um, I saw some weird children go down there. What's wrong? I'm thinking. I think I lost my gunny bears. Somewhere. Why are you here? Who are you? Where did you come from? Who's your home room? Uh, I'm new here. What's your favorite color? Purple. Mm. What's your name? Torben. Mm. You sure? Yep. Mm. Why do you wear glasses? Because I need to. Are you a nerd? Yep. Why do you have blue eyes and blonde hair? So? <laughs> you have blue eyes. I didn't say that. So what? Back off, woman. I saw the whole thing, and I'm going to tell you who it was. It was, it was. Bloodhound. And 
track down the criminal. And beware, you can sniff flies. Tastes like blue. Maybe blueberries. Blue pineapple. I've got some questions for you. Like what? Seemed like earlier you were looking for a gun. Care to explain? No, I was looking for my gunny, I mean gummy bears. Then why did you say gun? Where No! Were no! Where no. Were I need you to cooperate. No. Where no. are Where no. are I need you to cooperate. No. Where no. are He's a sorry. Sorry about that. Are you crazy? Yeah. I'm out of here. I don't need this. Man, this boy is hard. and it turns out that the killer is still on the loose. Jimmy, sponsored by Tostitos Pizza Rolls, died. And looks like Keenan is the killer. Um, hi. Caught red-handed. In other news, turns out that Bill Burr is innocent. He was just trying to help the chief from choking on a hot dog. So he's free. The explanation seems a little bit overcomplicated. Shut up, you're going to jail. <laughs> I swear I'm going to get you out of here. Uh, you know how I'm supposed to tell people are lying? Yeah? You're lying. As long as I'm alive, I'll try to get you out. Which won't be very long. You know. Okay, shut up. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, your very own reporter right here. Let hit him with his it, right before his final blow. And it, it turns out that Keenan, nor the other guy, was actually the killer. Yeah. Well, that doesn't really explain how one of the people died while he was in jail. Well, why is it Keenan? Um, why did you high-five the killer? Because he's a friend.
What is this? I didn't, I was just trying to kill you. I didn't mean to slap. Hans. All right, let's talk about some events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. Kicking it off for your Friday, if you're interested in doing some gymnastics and tumbling and all sorts of indoor fun, Mismo, Misma, and Roots Acro Sports Center is open until 11 for anybody who's interested in doing that kind of stuff. Food for Finds continues throughout this weekend, and it goes until December 9th. Um, so basically tomorrow is the last day to uh, trade in your uh, non-perishable food to uh, uh, basically have fine relief. So if you uh, have any overdue books, food for fines, Missoula Public Library. And all food proceeds go to the Montana Food, Missoula Food Bank. I don't know why I keep on saying Montana Food Bank. Uh, okay, so Tiny Tales story time at the Missoula Public Lardy, uh, Library starting at 10.30 a.m. So if you have any... Uh, food and other stuff that you want to bring you can also enjoy some fun time learning uh, teaching kids how to read reading with the kids and do some story time and get an appreciation for books for kids at a young age starting at 10 30 a.m this morning cribbage and bridge if you're interested in playing some of those card games against some uh, local experts uh, Missoula Senior Center hosts it pretty much every day around 1230-ish um, open house at the makerspace the Missoula Public Library starts at 1 p.m. it goes from 1 to 6 p.m. they have a 3d printer what more can you ask for? Um, teen Writers Group is also at 3.30 at the Missoula Public Library. So after school for teens who are struggling with uh, writing or just want to improve their writing skills, go down to the Missoula Public Library to do all that stuff starting at 3.30 p.m. They also have chocolate. Predator feeding on the Missoula Insectarium. So basically they have a uh, they feed their hungry uh, tarantula um, every uh, Friday at 4 p.m. And they explain, demonstrate how they capture and consume prey and see who's hungry today. Little Red Truck Vintage Market, not associated with MCT, uh, is now with uh, Heated Barns at the Missoula Fairgrounds. So this is the third annual European Christmas Market at the Historic Museum at f the Fairgrounds. And you may see the feature recently on Flea Market Style Magazine in Romantic Homes. Um, see what everyone's talking about. Over 100 vintage handmade and gift vendors uh, in this two-story uh, two barn plus outdoor vendors that will stay cozy near the fire. And you can taste local foods, trucks, hot spiced uh, goo wine and live music so that's happening today and tomorrow at the Missoula Fairgrounds Top Hat Family Friendly Friday kicks off that starting at 6 p.m. at the Top Hat Lounge. Um, you can check that out, and it's from 6 to 9 p.m. And then as soon as 9 hits, they're going to kick everyone out um, who's under the age of 21. So just be aware of that. Tuba Christmas is tonight. Gary Gillette came on uh, Missoula Live just Monday to talk about it. If you get a chance to see the interview, there's a weird little forced perspective that makes Gary Gillette and his uh, um, cohort look twice as big as Joel and Kim Anderson. So check it out. The interview is great. I mean, like, it's wonderful. And they play some holiday music on tuba. So Tuba Christmas is where they invite as many people who play some heavy metal, uh, brass instruments uh, by heavy metal, um, gather around and play Christmas songs for the people at the Southgate Mall. And usually musicians have a terrible time at Southgate Mall, but they're the, because uh, it's already so noisy and so loud there. But the noisiest and loudest thing that's going to be at the mall tonight at starting at 7 p.m. is the tubas. A Christmas Carol, the musical, um, it's a play that I'm in. If you want to go see it, uh, there's a play happening tonight at starting at 7.30 p.m. at the um, Missoula Community Theater, and you can check that out. It's happening uh, this Friday, this weekend long, and then pretty much Wednesday through Sunday. Next week is the last week to go check it out. If you guys are interested in being out and about tonight, Jeff Austin Band's going to be playing at the Top Hat Lounge at 9 p.m. Dead Hipster presents I Love the 90s. So if you're obsessed with the 90s, friends, Seinfeld, that kind of stuff, you can go to the Badlander, and they'll be playing music probably from the early 2000s. Um, they'll be like, it's 90s, right? Okay, Band in Motion can be at the Union Club. Um, Pay Dirt is going to be the Sunrise Saloon country music, so if you're interested in that. Mary Bassmus at the VFW, so, uh, oh, it's Bassmus, my bad. People who like bass, go to the VFW tonight. And that's kind of what concludes all your events for your Friday night. I'm going to show you an art clip, and when I come back, I'm going to go over all the events for your Saturday and maybe Sunday.
All right, let's talk about some events that are happening for your Saturday. The more people know CPR, the less people die. And CPR lessons at the Li Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center starts at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning on Saturday. And you can check that out. It, it, it focuses on this course on a hands-on instruction with basic management of illness and injuries in the first few minutes. Uh, techniques on, on how to uh, stop bleeding that can be seen. Um, ways to help with possible broken bones and sprains. Uh, safety of safety of the scene, basic AED, and life-saving CPR. Upon successful completion, you will uh, receive a two-year Heart Saver First Aid CPR certification card. Uh, Scholastics Chess Tournament is happening at the Missoula International School, so um, hang out with all those uh, smarty pants kids and ha basically play, watch them play chess. I think you, uh, it's open to all students in grades K through 12, so I guess I can't play chess against a, um, a, a kindergarten t a kid. All level of players welcome and must be familiar with a basic rule of chess. Registration starts at uh, 9.30 a.m. and it's a $5 entry fee. First round starts at 11 a.m. All players will play five rounds bring chess equipment if you have it some will be provided no concessions bring lunch and snacks store prizes and awards so basically it's just a place to play chess that's all um, book fair is happening at the families for children's museum um, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, join Barnes and Nobles for the festival fundraiser where the percentage of all net sales in the store will be donated to Families First Children's Museum. Um, they have a uh, performance by the Sky Blues of Big Sky High School at 2 p.m., a visit from Santa at 3, and a special surprise in the early afternoon. Be sure to tell your cashier for your, um, your support to Families First Children's Museum. Um, the right stuff um, is a pun which is part of Living Art of Montana. Living Art of Montana drop-in Saturday writing workshop facilitated by Jack Shiflett. The right stuff is a writers and non-writers alike. They'll use essay and guided writing prompts to explore writing as a tool of self-expression. Offered free of charge to adults 18 and older dealing with an illness or loss. No experience necessary. For questions, you can call them at 549-5329. So Living Art is a place to create, share, and heal. So if you want more information, go to livingartofmontana.org. Um, downtown carriage rides are free, and they're going to be pretty much doing it every single Saturday um, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And these carriage rides can fit up to 20 people in a single carriage. And this is sponsored by Lithia Ford of Missoula and provided by the resort at Paws Up. So nice little carriage ride. Maybe you want to wait for it to snow a little bit, but it's a nice way to basically have free carriage rides. And they line up on Pine Street um, starting at 11 a.m. So And they're going to be basically going back and forth up uh, Pine Street. Um, introduction to cro uh, croquet, uh, crochet, sorry about that, it's not croquet, it's not the game, it's the knitting thing. Uh, croquet, the makerspace, <laughs> Muzu Public Library, uh, what could be simpler than a piece of string on a hook? The centuries old of crochet can be used to make everything from pot holders and scarves to lace and hyperbolic structures. Come to see the series of three classes to get started with a simple, flexible craft. And this happens at the Muzu Public Library starting at 1 p.m. tomorrow. And this is only from 1 to 2.30 p.m., so it's only an hour and a half of your commitment if you're really interested in doing it. A uh, holiday open house is going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula. The Clay Studio of Missoula will host a holiday open house with free hands-on pottery lessons, paint a decoration station, a silent auction, live music by Steve Glucker and his friends. So he's Steve Glucker is the former curator at the Missoula Art Museum, and he um, is a fun and a wonderful to talk to. So uh, this is going to be from 2 to 6 p.m. at the um, Clay Studio of Missoula. So, uh, and it's going to basically uh, celebrate their holiday sale and, and exhibi exhibition will also be open. The sale features a wide array of handcrafted ceramic works. Uh, sacred Sexuality Intro Talks. So, um, Middle Sweet Herbs is talking about uh, sexual healing. And when you get that feeling, you need some sexual healing, and that's at Middle Sweet Herbs <laughs> starting at 2 p.m. Uh, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, How the Grinch Stole Circus. Uh, Mask Studio joins for an adventure of Whoville where the Grinch attempts to stop the circus. Every year the circus comes back, but will this be the final time? Come join the Mask Studio and find out performance of aerial fire and dance in the holiday theme um, while telling the version of the Grinch through motion. And there's two shows. Saturday the 9th at 6 p.m. and Sunday at 1 p.m. So you can check that out. Uh, you have the Three Sisters of Weehawken. Um, this is going to be at the Roxy. It's going to be a stage performance at the Roxy Theater uh, with Teresa Waldorf, uh, Rosie Ayers, uh, Selena Chatlane, and Bridget Smith star in the Three Sisters of 
Weehawken, a play by Deborah uh, Zoe uh, Lawfer and directed by Rosie Ayers. Uh, family and Sat- uh, far- Friday and Saturday, December 8th and 9th at the Roxy Theater at 7.30 p.m. Um, so, yeah, you can check it out. It can be performance, uh, um, some live theater um, happening there as well. So, Missoula Community Radio Rock and Roll Toy Drive is going to be at the Union, Call- Union Hall starting at 8 p.m. Up, Basically, just go upstairs of the Union Hall and you can't miss it. And they're going to do a toy drive for Missoula Community Radio. Um, then... Um, Here's some of the oh so there, there's going to be a lot of uh, musicians up there as well so there's brute fit f- uh, finesse Corey Fay and the uh, good uh, god uh, darn uh, I don't want to say <laughs> that but Satan slave psycho punk chicks Bjorn uh, Begesson Judith Gap Joseph and Dylan Running Crane uh, Wailing Aaron Jetty, Je- uh, Jennings. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening there. If you're interested in finding out more events that are happening, you could go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is where I get my information about where you can find more information about what's going on here in Missoula. Um, I'm running out of time, so I will wrap up. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you for joining me this morning and in Missoula. Have a good weekend. I'll see you Wednesday. <laughs>